Hey guys, it's Greg. We're here in Asheville, right in front of the Lab Brewery. Getting ready to go in and have some beers. Speaking of beers, let's go see what's in the fridge today. Hey everybody, thanks for stopping by Greg's Beer Reviews today. Uh-oh, beer in a green bottle. This is probably trouble. Yeah. This is Peroni Nastro Azzurro, a beer of superior. superior. Uh, guys, the only reason I picked this up uh, is because it is brewed, uh, I think it's from Italy. Uh, beer Italiana Originale. Yep, uh, Peroni in Rome. This is out of Roma, Italy, guys. Uh, these uh, these guys, the Bira Peroni industry is a or is owned by S A B Miller, which is S A B is South African Breweries, and Miller conglomerates, which is similar to InBev. They are the second largest brewery. InBev is the largest conglomeration in Sab. Uh, Miller is the second largest, and then you go on down the chain, uh, I think uh, Heineken may be third there, and uh, uh, what was the other one? Uh, Carlsberg was on the list, and also uh, the Miller, I mean uh, Molson Coors uh, conglomerate there too, so those are your, probably your top five, right there, five or six uh, uh, in the world. This is, uh, like I said, from, from Italy. I was the only reason I picked it up. This is the Italian macro lager. I am pretty sure of it, guys. And it may be a little skunky being in a green bottle. And looking at the cap of it now, it looks like it's even a twisty. Uh, Year-round availability, 5.10 ABV. This may be the closest to a macro lager you're going to see me do here. And the only reason I'm doing it, like I said, because it's from Italy. And I've seen it. Uh, I pick it up. I, well, as soon as I looked at it, I knew what it was going to be before I even did any research or anything on it. So, um, this is uh, this is a Pilsner. It says Euro Pale Lager. Uh, it is a Pilsner Lager type beer, guys. This is a this is a very going to be a very thin, uh, easy drinking. Uh, well, I call it a lot more beer, guys. But we're getting into the winter time in October here, so this may be get closer to a, a leaf breaking beer. Or getting closer to a snowblower beer. <laughs> the meat for this is poultry, fish, and shellfish, a glassware. I could have used a Pilsner glass or whatever. I, I'm not going to all the trouble. I'm going to use a typical pint glass for these guys. Uh, and beer is not recommended for extended celery. And let's see if it's a twisty. No, maybe not. I am prepared. It is not a twisty. Surprising that it does is not. Ooh, yeah, there's some skunkiness going on there. I don't know if it's Pepe Le Pew, but there is some skunkiness coming out of this green bottle. Loggers in a green bottle. What, what do they think of next? It'll be like a skunk in a bag, wouldn't it? Over here into the light, we got a very pale yellow almost water colored. I mean, it, it, it is very thin looking. There are quite a few bubbles, very small bubbles streaming up to the bottom. Did not pour a massive head. I got something in my beer. A little black speck. Not a bug though. That's a good sign. Uh, fairly carbonated. It looks like a micro locker in a glass. Let's get a nose on it guys. Oh yeah, it definitely has some skunkiness going on with this. Green bottles and lagers do not mix. And like I said, I don't see a date on this one. I looked before I bought it and said, eh, hey, shut up. What, what, what to yahoo? Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse, excuse me. Best before end 021813. I salute you guys. Uh, they got the date on them. I should have expected that from uh, uh, Sab Miller. Uh, put a date on something so it is uh, February 18th of 2013 so I could imagine how skunky it will be by then because it's pretty damn skunky right now <laughs> and guys 
Let's give it a taste. See what we got going on. Italian skunk. Do oh, you reckon they have skunks in Italian? In Italy? Italian. Other than the skunkiness, it tastes like a typical macro locker. Very thin, uh, grassy, grainy, like hay. It's going to get that hay taste and smell. Not, not much malt, not much hops. Probably a little corn and rice thrown in there, just the propellers and stuff, guys. They're producing this as cheaply as they can, I guarantee it. Smells like it, tastes like it. It is what it is, and what it is, is just a fizz. Yellow fizzy water. Guys, I'm going to let it warm up about 10 minutes at the most, and I'll be right back when we do the final job. Not impressed. Alright guys, I'm back. Ooh, this is a tough one to get down. This is like a skunky Budweiser or a skunky Miller's, uh, guys. It's uh, nothing to write home about. The only reason I picked it up, it was from, uh, from Italy. And uh, once I found out it was a uh, Sab Miller product, Pretty much knew what I was in for. So, guys, final joke. Ah. Yeah, it's a skunky Miller. That's always what I need. And that's exactly what it is, guys. This is a 3. It is a D, below average. I won't sink it out again. If you've had this one, guys, give me a comment back on this one. Pretty damn nasty here. Great beer, 7 overall, 7 in the style. It never got any better. The skunkiness never went away. So, uh, pretty, uh, pretty revolting beer as far as I'm concerned. Uh, there's a lot of people like that skunky smell and taste. I am not one of them guys. Uh, beer out comes up with a 65, which is in their poor range, and it's pretty poor. I agree with that. It's a poor beer. A lot of junk in there. Rice, filler, corn, grass, hay, tree bark. I can't tell what they throw in there. Uh, it looked very clean and refreshing. This is. This is a typical lawnmower beer, but it's got the skunk going with this and stuff. But I did not like it. The only positive note about this is got a damn date on the back of the bottle. That's it. That's the only redeeming quality about this beer. Green bottle, lager, a macro lager on top of that. So, uh, full of adjuncts. Not a tasty beer, guys. Won't well, have it again. So, with that being said, guys, let me know what you think. I think we'll find a better one in the fridge tomorrow. Join me then.